thank God, amen, for our for this opportunity, amen, to just be able to stand before his people. I don't take it for granted. Thank God that that when God calls, amen, that he also equips. But I'm, I'm thankful that he, that he also calls because he, he trusts that we're going to have the discipline and sacrifice. Commit that, amen, to commit to us. To deliver the gifts that right. He's given us, Amen. And to, right. to edify His people. All right. The Bible says that there are some apostles, prophets, yeah. pastors, evangelists, teachers yeah. for the edifying and the equipping yeah. All right. of the saints. Uh -huh. yes, sir. And so I'm, I'm, I'm excited that, that God chose to call me to a couple of those All right. positions, Amen, because He felt that I would have the discipline. Amen. The commitment, the work ethic. Amen. To, to do my part All right. so that he might be able to use me to edify his people. And so right. I don't take it for granted any time that I stand before his people. All right. And I know that there's a charge to keep. Amen. And that we have a God to glorify him. Uh -huh. I can't just open my mouth and spit out something I read on the internet or a sermon that I pulled from somewhere. I think that God is going to be pleased. Yes, sir. Amen. God expects us to speak a, a, a fresh word for right now for times like these for the people that are sitting in this congregation listening to his word. And so I just wanted to say thank you to God. I kind of got broke up when we were singing the, the hymn, um, Lift Every Voice and Sing It. And, um, and that's, that it, it always ministers to me. And, and more than just the words, you know, just thinking that, you know, that, that, that was originally a, a poem right over in Jackson by the name of Jed James Weldon Johnson. And, um, and he taught that to his students as a poem. And, and Booker T. Washington, Washington was coming and he, they were going to recite that for Booker T. Washington. And, um, and, then, it, it, and then after after that moment, um, it just it did what it did. Amen. And it's a song that we can, even today, uh, more than a century later, that we can look at it. And, and, um, Thank God for the words that he, that he spoke to us that was relevant then and the words that are still relevant today. So I, I thank God for his spirit that ministers to us throughout all generations. Amen. Word, word of God, we're going to look at Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 through 23a. And, and I preached this word before. I preached it um, a couple of years ago um, as we celebrated the, um, not celebrated, but we commemorated the assassination of Dr. King and, um, and, 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 um, and God began to minister to me uh, that, that that was a word that we needed to hear again and so for those of you that's already heard this word, hope that God can speak something fresh and relevant and reinforce uh, something within your spirit but I think God has a word for his people yes, Colossians chapter 1 begin in verse 19 the scripture says for God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. And through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He, that's through Christ. He reconciled everything to himself. He, he made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you who were once far away from God. Is that anybody in here? Yes, sir. Once was a couple, a couple of us. A couple of us that were once far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Somebody, oh, he was talking about me. Yeah, that, that we, yeah we were separated. Our evil thoughts and actions, they separated us from God. So as close as you thought you were, the evil thoughts and actions, they were separated you. You from, said so. from God. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence. And you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. That's good news right there. Um, all the stuff I did, and I don't have one single fault. Man, God gets some work right there. First part of verse 23 says, but you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. 
again. You must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. The title of today's word is commemoration without continuation is an abomination. Commemoration without continuation is an abomination. Um, just a quick, quick, quick definition real quick before we get into the word. Com commemoration is a ceremony or a celebration in which a person or an event is remembered. That's what a commemoration is, a ceremony or an event in which a person or an event is remembered. An abomination um, is a, a, an atrocity, a disgrace, an obscenity, an outrage, or a curse. That's a, an abomination entitled commemoration without continuation is an abomination. An extremely effective tactic used through the ages to limit the potential of individuals or groups is to cause self doubt or question one's own work. That's a, a tactic that's been used through the years to, to, to if I can cause self doubt for you to question your own work. And once a person can be convinced that they are worth less, they will accept mistreatment and make excuses for their abuse. I saw this young lady, I don't, I don't, I don't know her, but you know, you see people on Facebook that, that, that they have fan requests and so you see this stuff. And so I see this, I see this young lady that, that post up, and uh, maybe she listens to the sermon and all the sermons also, but I know she always liking all the stuff I do. And, and, um, and I, and I saw her make a, a comment that said, you know, before I um, can't remember what it was, but it said, but basically before I am involved, before I, I mean, something like before I have another, I mean, basically, before I have sex again, I'm not trying to figure out what it said, before I have sex again, uh, I'm going to be somebody's fiance. Um, I have to learn to, uh, I deserve to be cherished. And so when I saw that, I, 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 I see that common thread I, when, I, when, I, when I see the post by him. And, um, and I really wanted to say, um, you know, do you value yourself? But I stay out of you. <laughs> and um, so I just, because people get the wrong way. Yes, sir. And, um, and, so, and so I just I just left it alone and I just began to pray for it. And I was interested in them. So, so I, just, I just, sometimes you just got to learn to let God handle some stuff. And, and you pray from a distance. Everybody don't need you to lay your hands on them. And so, and so when I saw Sally, I say something, you know, she might, that might be a door, you know, something like that. And I don't know the young lady. And so just let me pray for her. But I, 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 I see patterns. I see patterns the way you flies and you twerk and, and you, and you, 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 you proud of yourself. And, you, and then other patterns the way you talking about, you know, dudes ain't no good and they dog and they cheat and they that. But, 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 but. But I've learned in, in life is that that once a person can, can be convinced that they are less, they will accept mistreatment and make excuses for their abuse. I'm going to be honest with you now. As a man, and I ain't telling you from what I heard, I'm telling you what I know now. So somebody might want to listen to this. I ain't always been up in this car. I've lived a complete life. All right. All right. And as a as a man, if I wanted to, to selfishly control the woman, my tactic would be to convince her that she is worth less than she may currently believe. And so I might see her, I might see her feeling good about herself, but I know if I can she 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 confident now, I can't really do nothing with it now. But if I can get her to a place to where she thinks less of herself. And then I can begin to manipulate her and, and, and do it, so, and do things that she she know this now. And now I'm up let me, let me, let me be real clear now. I'm, 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 I'm letting you in on the game. I'm, I'm, I'm letting you in on the game. Now, now I'm, I'm telling you something that folks just won't, won't normally tell you. See, I wouldn't show my hand up front. Up front, I wouldn't show my hand by immediately treating her in a worthless manner. I wouldn't do that up front. But, but I would slowly convince her that I care so much for her 
And I'm willing to introduce her to a world of things that's so much more useful than what she currently values. I'll expose her to the world. She has a value system bro, now. Bro. She has boundaries now. She has things she will and won't do. She has things you will and you won't say to her. You're going to respect her. But what I will slowly do, because her world is working for her, but what I will slowly do is begin to pull her from her world and introduce her to a, 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 a whole new world that seems to offer her so much and then begin to belittle the world that she comes from. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then once, I've, once I've effectively separated her, it might be a family. I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what, it's that whatever thing is that's grounding her and making her have good thoughts and make good decisions, once I begin to separate her from those things, whether it's a family, whether it's a value system, whatever it is, once I begin to, to I've effectively separated her from the things that gave her a high level of self-worth and self-confidence, I can then begin to treat her in a manner that's less than what she's worth. Got separated now. Yes, sir. All the things that gave her strength, even when she was making mistakes, but those things gave her strength. And she could look back and she could draw on those things, even when things were perfect. But she had something to draw on her. I have to separate her from those things, be little of those things. After a while, I can't do it, obviously. But then we begin to pull her away and show her things that seem to be so much more important. And after a while, once I, took, once I separated her from those things, now the real man. Some of you all have been in a relationship and like, he yeah, ain't in the same no more. No, that's what he been. You just didn't, you couldn't see it. She different now, no, you see it now. But I pulled you away from, and now you don't want to believe it. That's good, No, you don't want, I got you, because now you're so dependent on my world. And so now your self-worth is, it's, it's, it's inextricably tied to me, who I am. You, you can't see yourself living. When I was going there with some songs, I can't breathe without you. Man. You can't see yourself breathing without me. You can't see yourself living, acting without me. In the same way, that's the tactic that the enemy uses that we're concerned about. We have a strong foundation, a strong upbringing, we have a value system. Even when we mess up, we still have a value system to draw off of, but then the enemy begins to open up the world to us. We start even questioning the idea that God even exists. We start questioning our faith because we're exposed to all of these fresh new ideas and fresh new thinking. And we begin to and we begin to question our very faith. But then once we're fully separated from our values, and then the enemy begins to show his or her hand. That's good, man. Enemy used the same tactics on the people of God. Once the doors are opened up, once we get a chance to sit at tables, we couldn't sit at anymore. Once we as preachers, once I get the opportunity to, to minister to large amounts of people. And, and, and what, 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 once, once the world begins to open up for me, the things that I saw that I said I would never do. When I gave my life and said, God, I accept your call, God, and, and God, I'm going to take this serious. And, and I laid my face in the Bible and the Bible and Bishop and, 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 and since, since other elders laid their hands on me and, and ordained me, I said what I would and wouldn't do and, and how, I, how I seemed wrong and I wouldn't go down that way. <coughs> so as soon as a whole new world begins to open up to me, a whole new group of people, the very things I said I would do, I find myself wondering on and doing those things. <laughs> Verse 19 through 20, this is what the scripture says. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. <coughs> And through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. Uh -huh. The death, burial, and resurrection brought about a reconciliation between the creator 
and the creation. It, 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 it brought about a reconciliation between the Creator and the Creator. The Scripture says that the shed blood of Christ on the cross called God to make peace with everything in heaven and in earth. That, that's what the Scripture says. And, and, and so, what does this say to me? Is that that personally, my relationship with God is better characterized as a pulling as opposed to a pushing. But <laughs> why? Because I am in the earth. And in the scripture, it says that the blood of Christ has called a reconciling peace between me and my creator. Notice I, I didn't say there is a, a pulling of me by God because I'm a Christian. But what I, I read is that there is a pulling and, and, and an embracing reconciliation because I'm in the earth. And so my title as a Christian has nothing to do with God pulling me. And, and, and sometimes people of faith get it twisted and think that God only cares about us. You ain't that special. You ain't that important. You ain't that smart. You, you, you're not that wonderful. The reason that God pulls us is because we are in the earth. I don't care if you're Buddhist. I don't care if you're Muslim. I don't, I don't care what you are. And some folks are going to get shook up. Separate. 
section in the church uh, that was the people uh, that went way out there uh, and in a section for people uh, that never did that much and got caught for what they were doing. Uh, he brought us all in together. And I walk in this thing feeling just as welcome. I, I walk in this thing feeling just as welcome. And you are holy uh, and blameless uh, as you stand before him uh, without a single fault. Uh, ain't no need uh, to get cocky, uh, but you ought to be confident. Uh, ain't no need uh, to look down on anybody else, uh, but you ought to be assured uh, that you belong to God. Uh, is there a witness in the house? Uh, somebody say, yeah. He is not merely uh, reconciled me, uh, but he has also made uh, me holy. Yes, Ron. He made me holy. Yes, Byron. He made him holy. Yes, Rosalind. He made her holy. The Bible says that God has made me holy. And then it goes on said that he also made me blameless. You can't bring it back up on me. Now, when I got saved, there was a folk that I felt that I needed to apologize to.
Oh, <laughs> 